I will be here answering questions, folks. I've done this like four weeks in a row now. I don't can't promise that I'll be doing it every every week, but um, I do like doing it, and I will, we still haven't run out of questions yet. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking questions from the questions on the side of the board here, and uh, I'll be I, I wouldn't mind talking about the Kickstarter that we're going to be running two weeks from today on January 5th. Um, if you have questions about that, but I can talk about Dice Tower or anything, even stuff that's not about board gaming. Oh, looks like I need to shut it down on my other thing. Hang on. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, anyhow, so... Here we go. We're going to start with some of the questions people asked as soon as I posted this. When am I going to do a video review of Battle Stations? Probably not. I have think I've come to the conclusion that I will only go back and do reviews of older games as they... If I, if I have the time. And right now, there's so many games that I need to review that are on my list to review. So I probably won't get to older games for a while. And especially if I've already done a, a written review of them. There are exceptions. If there's a game in my top 100 and I think it needs a video review badly, I've done those. Am I going to do my top 100 extended games, like 101 to 200? And the answer to that is no, uh, mostly because I didn't even go that far this year. I put them together. Once I got 100, I was pretty much done. We're getting a lot of stuff done this year. Andre wants to know, am I going to review Orleans? Yes, I am. Thorne wants to know, did I like the board game World War Z? Not really. It was okay at best. Very non-thematic. And it has no staying power. Uh, Michael says, What would you consider the best three games you personally don't enjoy? You know, wow, that's it's an interesting question. What are the, Well, I mean, Go would be one of those. Okay, I think Go is a really well-done game. I don't like it, but I mean, it's hard to find a problem with such a pure classic game. Um. Wow, that is a good a good one. Terra Mystic is a game I'm not a big fan of, but I know it's a well designed game. Um. Whew, there's two. I I I'll have to think before I can do a third. When did I really become an interest in tabletop games, and how? My whole life, really. And how? Because I had a big family, and we like to play games. Ardo has a great question. Is Melody Vassal's top 100 games of all time of 2014 coming? And the answer to that is yes. What we're going to do is we're going to do that Wednesday morning. Um, we're going to do it live here, and she'll come and do it. And when we're done, we'll take some uh, questions. So she'll have a chance to do her top 100 live, and then we'll take some questions. But that is coming. Um, do you or your friends ever play Dream Phone or Electronic Mall Madness? The, uh, the uh, Flip the Table guys try to get me to play that, that stuff, but no, I have not played it. I would have played it had they been at uh, uh, BGG Con this year, but they were not. Uh, Anthony says, do you still have a Cran Rails game in your collection? Will we ever see a refresh to that mechanic? Well, actually, I currently don't have one. Uh, I, I, I kept the Mars one for a very long time, and then it just got cut out by better games. I think it's a very great uh, system. does feel a bit outdated. However, I recently played a game... Uh, Spike. Spike, hang on, I got it right here. Spike is a game that really feels like a Cran Rail game. Now, there's some differences, but it, it fits in the same kind of box, per se, and it does it in a very streamlined, well-done way. I'm very impressed with this game. So this could be, in a sense, considered a refresh of the Cran Rails games. Uh, how long did you think you're stupid and why? I've always thought I wasn't very smart. Why? Because I... People told me so. Thank you, sir. Uh, are there any other classic game me mechanisms that could be used as core mechanisms for modern games besides Mancala? Hmm. Well, I mean, people do them. They take the chess of capturing pieces that's in a game, the surrounding of pieces that are in Go... I mean, I can't really think of many other classic game mechanisms from those old games that there is. 
Um, can you fix your shelves to be square? No. In fact, I deliberately don't have them that way because one of the reasons I, I did it that way um, if, if, is because then they are supporting each other. I don't want one, I want the, the one shelf to be slightly on the other shelf. It kind of just distributes the weight a little bit better. Also, it really irritates all the uh, obsessive folks out there who ask me that question all the time. Have you played Wiz War recently? And do you think, do you, I still think it's ex extremely ra random? Um, I, last time I played it was a couple years ago, probably. Yes, I think it's extremely random. And it seems odd because it seems like it's a game that I should love. And I just, I just didn't. I don't know why. When will you play and review Shadows of Brimstone? I hope to play it soon. I'm not sure when. And review it thereafter. Uh, do you think we'll see Fury of Dracula reprint anytime in the near future? Wasn't his ass last week? I feel like it was. And so my answer is very emphatically, no, I don't think you'll see that. Do I like the Game of Thrones universe of the board game area? Okay. Um, I, I actually don't. Um, I understand its attraction to people. I understand that the, the video, I mean, that the, the, the TV series is very big. I've read the books. Um... I I, I, I'm, I I think it's well written, although I think it's exceptionally and unnecessarily crude. But beyond that, the reason I'm not a big fan of the universe is because I I want a I want heroes, and there's very few heroes. Yeah, you could say Jon Snow's a hero, and Arya Stark, and um, uh, I mean, there's other people in there who are heroes, but they're ex exceptionally flawed and. And I, and I think a flawed hero is not a bad thing. It's good to have a flaw, but I get the, the notion that I wouldn't like any of these people. So, but anyhow, uh, uh, the LCG, I've never played. The board game is a good one, but it, it's it, it's very stressful to me, and so I don't feel like playing it much anymore. Very much the same way diplomacy is stressful. It's a very long game, and when it's over, you just feel like worn out. And I like my games to, I like to feel like, woo, that was fun when I'm done. Uh, let's see. Uh, next question. We find we find that we can uh, the, we can get people to play our favorite multiplayer games, but aren't sure how to get others interested in our favorite two-player games. Um, tips on how to get other people interested in your favorite two-player games? Try to get them to play it, and if they don't, stop trying. I, 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 I guess these these kind of questions. I, I don't try to evangelize people to to like a specific type of game. I want people to play games. But let's say, for example, let's say I love Coliseum here. Okay, and Coliseum's a great game, and so I'm trying to get people to play it, but they're not that interested in it. Why would I keep trying to get them to do it? I, I don't know. It's like that guy who's always bugging you saying, you got to try this, you got to try this, you got to try this. You try it, and you, and you don't like it as much as that person does, and they're like, oh, you didn't do it the right way, or whatever. Mm, I don't know. Um, if I can find one person to play my favorite two-player games with, which I can, then I'm happy. Um... When I do live events, how do I hook up the camera and mics to the computer? I use a... Well, hang on. I'll show you. There's probably other ways to do it, but I use this thing here called uh, Black Magic uh, Design. I'm not sure what model this one is, uh, but this has... HDMI in, HDMI out, but more importantly than that, has a Thunderbolt cable on it, which I can hook to my um, Mac. So I have an HDMI going. I wish I had one that took multiple cameras. I, I would like to have a multi-camera setup to some degree. Uh, this time I did a workaround by having Nick show one thing on his stream, and I showed another on mine. I have a Radio Shack, Radio Shack uh, box that I can press a button that goes between two cameras, but that's just not as interesting. But so this hooks into the camera and HDMI, and since it's HDMI, uh, it will also take the, the audio from the camera, and then the Thunderbolt takes everything from here to the computer. Um, I have watched the Angry Joe show, yes. Have I had any experiences of overly negative Kickstarter communities? Back in the Cool Me Not Dogs of War one, there seemed to be a lot of people trying to stir the pot and anger people in the comments. I don't really know. I, I don't really get involved in the in the communities that much of each Kickstarter. 
I watch the Kickstarters from a distance, and that's about about it. Have I played Trekking the National Parks? And do you think you will review it? I have not played it, so probably not review it. I haven't even seen it. Uh, did anyone work out the odds of Jason being the spy that many times? No, and it was really funny. If, if For those to fit in context here, Jason Levine and our playgroup, we played uh, Spyfall Live, and I don't remember what the percentage was of him being the spy, but out of five, then six, then seven people, he was a spy the majority of the times, which was really odd and funny. I mixed the cards up differently each time. I let him pick. I picked for him. He just kept getting the uh, spy. All right, we need news of the 2015 Kickstarter. Well, the Kickstarter is starting in, on January 5th, 2015. It's going to be very similar to this past year's Kickstarter, in which our emphasis is to make the dice tower better with one major change, which I would like that to be somewhat of a surprise, and we'll hold that one off um, for a bit now. It's going to have cards and dice and poker chips and um, dice towers and play mats and things. Although this year I want to emphasize the fact that we want this Kickstarter to be something that raises money for the dice tower and not so much a, a store that you can get things. That being said, here's some of the promos that have come in. I will show some promos as they come in. Uh, here I have um, soy sauce card promos. This is for uh, Sushi Go. You get a set of four of those. An alternate color artwork card for Legendary. Uh, this is actually for Legendary Villains. Um, two cards here for Steam Park. A card here, a Storm Tracker. This is for Forbidden Desert. And then a new car, a card for the new uh, King of New York called Monster Idol. So that's some of the cards that you'll be seeing coming from the Kickstarter. Who do you think will be nominated for the 2015 Spiel des Jahres? Well, I think that two of the three games that will be nominated, we haven't even heard of them yet. It's probably too early. Sometimes they pick a game that came out. Like, was there a game at Essen, for example, that I think will be nominated for the Spiel des Jahres? I don't know. I mean, I could see Medieval Academy being nominated, but that one didn't have a German release, and once Yellow publishes it, I think that one has a good chance. I really think that's a Spiel des Jahres game, but I don't know. Um, at what point... Hang on a second. Every once in a while, folks, when I'm, I'm going through these questions, there is a ton of questions, and they'll, they'll just all show up on the screen. And then I, uh, then I have to catch up and figure out where I was. There we go. I've caught up. At what point during the gaming marathon did you realize that you were going to have to cut it down to 18 hours? What was the key moment you realized 24 hours was not going to work? Well, to begin with, I had always planned on it being 18 hours, and Sam and Z were pushing for 24. There was a lot of different factors involved, but the, yeah, I, I hit my hump, and you know what? I... I did go to bed when it was over, and I slept for like three or four hours and then got back up. I, I probably could have gone the 24 hours, but I didn't think it would have been enjoyable watching time. Um, I'm not real... I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with exactly how everything turned out in a live stream. That's actually probably a... Uh, probably... I'm probably not being strong enough by that. I was very unhappy with how some of the stuff came across in this one. I thought we would improve over the first one, and I don't think we did. And so I'm going to figure out ways to make these live shows better for you all. I, I, There's just different thoughts that are swirling in my head, and I'm still reading feedback on it. And I see there's stuff people liked, and there's stuff people really did not like. And so how can I make it a better experience? That's something that I'm always trying to figure out. So... Uh, when did I think, when did I say figure when I, as soon as I saw that Jason was tired, Jason is the one guy who never gets tired and he was tired. What's the game on my shelf that I haven't played in the longest time. Wow. Um, you know, command and colors ancients. I haven't played that in ages and I'm wondering if it's going to stay on my shelf much longer because of that. I love the game, but I, I barely get to play it or memoir, even though I like them both quite a bit. So I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. Uh, thank you to everyone who's saying, uh, um, uh, Merry Christmas. I appreciate that. Why well, do a video of Sam Z, Jason's game collections as a stretch goal? Huh. 
That's interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Did the uh, Zaya experience from the 18-hour event turn you off from potentially running the longer type games? No, it hasn't, but it has done this. One, I am not going to do any more longer type games like that unless A, everyone who's in the game has played it before, and B, they all really like the game. I'm not ever trying to hide negative opinions of games. I want, you know, on our show, if we don't like a game, I want that to be very obvious. We don't like this game. At the same time, I think it's not very fun to watch someone who isn't enjoying a game, which happened at various points throughout the live gaming thing. So uh, I want people who love the game, and I think that's more enthusiastic and fun to watch. Um, let's see here. When can we see a playthrough of Star Wars Imperial Assault? I was hoping to see it during the gaming marathon. I was hoping to show it, but by the time I... It came I was getting close to it in the schedule. I realized we wouldn't do it justice, and some of the other games that we've been playing up to that point kind of dissuaded me from it. Um, so, again, it's going to be following another rule. We're going to play Imperial Assault with people who've already played it before and who like the game quite a bit. How many hours a week do you work? It's difficult to guess in that regard. 60, 70? Um, but then again, don't, don't get, jump on me. And, and some of that working is with my family. Like I'm playing games with my family. Um, I take breaks from my work and go visit with my family during the day. So it, I would have a hard time telling you, but I start from the moment I get up in the morning and often I'm working all the way till I go to bed at night, just taking time throughout the day to do things with my family and wife. And then I do that pretty much every day of the week, except Sundays. Is there a chance that part one of the live cast will fix itself for viewing? I hope so, but I'm starting to feel like it's never going to happen. I do not know what happened. I think it's YouTube because we did not do anything different with part one. Part one, the first two hours are missing and it's not showing up in the in the live stream th in, in the YouTube thread. Let's hope so, but I, I'm not I'm not looking like it's it's going to happen, which is sad. Uh, let's see. Once again, folks, I would ask that you only say your question once. If I don't get to it, then ask it next time. But if you know, I'm noticing some questions here that people have already asked, and when I get to them, uh, then it just clutters up the, the question feed. Should I go to Gen Con as my first convention? If you are an introvert, no. All right? If you are even remotely an introvert, you should not go to Gen Con as your first. Go to a smaller convention and one that's very friendly to new people. Board Game Geek Con has like a... Uh, if it's your first time session, they, they, they tell you what to do. That, that's great for newcomers. Most smaller conventions are. Origins would be friendlier. So unless you're someone who like, wants to jump in the middle of a gigantic crowd, I wouldn't pick Gen Con as your first convention. The biggest sleeper hit? Ask Jacob, what is the biggest sleeper hit of the year? I don't know. Let me think on that one. Because a sleeper hit would mean something that a lot of people are really enjoying and playing but hasn't been getting a lot of buzz. And since I'm the guy who actually makes a lot of the buzz, it's hard for me to determine what a sleeper hit might be. I think a better question would be like, what's a sleeper hit of 2013? Because when we look back at 2013, we're seeing some of the games that were really talked about uh, are barely talked about now. And even that one I would have to sit and think about. Should I buy Mage Wars or Summoner Wars? You want a quicker game, a longer game, a fast tactical game, or a game that lets you cast all kinds of weird spells? Really, go watch both reviews and see which one you like better. If you have Ticket to Ride 10th Anniversary and Ticket to Ride Europe, do you recommend getting Nordic countries as well? <laughs> and these questions are sometimes really specifically odd. Do you know, of course you don't need to get every Ticket to Ride, or you can. There's none that feels... There's no Ticket to Rides that are like, well, if you have this one, you don't need this one. But at the same time, you don't need them all. So I, I would look at it and say, does it seem like something that's interesting to me? I apologize, I, I don't um, I don't want to say any more about that. And I need to quick check something here, folks, on the internet here, just to make sure I haven't. Okay. Uh, anyhow, uh, am I going to run the Imperial Assault streaming? Yes. Uh, is it true that Hasbro's taken rights to distribute Imperial Assault? I haven't heard that. If someone could send me a link to that, I would appreciate it, but I haven't heard anything about that. 
Have you tried the expansion for Imperial Settlers? No, I haven't. Z has it, though. Um, so I know it doesn't add a ton of stuff to the game, but I would like to try it out. Um, do you think Plat Hat's upcoming Spectre Ops makes a reprint of Fury Dracula less likely or necessary? I don't think they have anything to do with each other other than they're in the same genre. Um, people who want to play Fury of Dracula want to play a game where they're chasing Dracula. Spectre Ops is a game where you're sneaking around and doing missions. They're very different games. Why don't you start your gaming marathons at 8 a.m.? That is a great question and one that we discussed uh, later on. It, the difficulty of that is, is that for me, church is a very big part of my life. And I do that every Sunday morning. If I started something like at 8 a.m. on Saturday and went to 8 a.m. Sun, um, Sunday morning, I would be exhausted and not have any use in what I do and in, in my involvement in church. So if I wanted to start it at 8 a.m., I would have to start it on a Friday, which would mean, A, we would need to have that Friday off, and all of us, and B, um, that it, people would be willing to give up a day they had off. I mean, I could do it on Friday, but not everybody could. Um, I've seen very little discussion of Star Wars Armada, says Trevin. Was anyone able to debut at Gen Con? Should I be excited about it as I am, or just X-Wing Redone? No, I know it's not X-Wing Redone. I know that from everyone who played it, and he told me it's not that way. Other than that, I haven't played it. I'm looking forward to trying it out myself, but I'm just basically waiting. Eric says, some publishers now run their own conventions. Uh, Coleman or not does, Fantasy Flights, Cosmic Con... Although technically Fantasy Flight hosted the convention, the Cosmic Encounter guys ran it. Serlin's Fantasy Strike Expo, I hadn't heard of that one. Privateer Press's Lock and Load. Who else should run a convention focused on their games? I don't know that anyone needs to. If I was thinking people who could, I bet WizKids could probably run some good HeroClix convention. And I bet Asmodee, they have enough games in their library to really do any convention. I don't need to know that anyone should run one. If they do, that's kind of cool. Would you ever consider doing a show about the cool stuff that your gaming group plays at? And would you do another segment on Cool Stuff, Inc., as you've done in the past? I'm considering doing that. I know I did one. That was actually before I even worked with them um, in the past. But, uh, yeah, I would consider doing it in the future. How balanced is Imperial Assault? Which side needs the more experienced player? I, I think you should always put the more experienced player as the, the dungeon master, in this case, the, the Imperials. But... It feels very balanced. I, I felt like I could throw my full weight at the players. Do you attend any conventions on the West Coast? Well, I I don't. First of all, there isn't many out there um, other than Kublai Khan. I, I, I don't know of any. I know, I, know, I know there's other ones out there, but that are jumping to my mind. I'm also not usually invited to them, again, because it, it costs a lot for me to fly out there, too. What happened to my mustache? What? What? <laughs> I just decided to shave it. I'll grow back, I guess. I don't know. Every once in a while, I do something minorly different. Uh, let's see here. Guys, this is a question and answer thing, and if you're going to use it to advertise something for someone else, I'll, I'll, I'll cut you out of the channel, just, just so you know. Um, what underused theme would you like to see in a game? Wait, do I get to ask this question every week? Yeah, I do. Grocery stores. I'm going to say the same thing. I'm going I'm to start saying really dumb stuff soon, too. Um, what's <laughs> When did you know the Dice Tower had really succeeded? I don't know. I mean, when I went to a convention and some guy came up to me and said that he really appreciated my reviews. That's when I knew it. It succeeded because I had made one person happier with their gaming life. See, I think the Dice Tower... What makes me excited about Dice Tower is we help people to some degree. Now, um, we're not a hospital or, or a humanitarian thing. We just help people have fun with gaming. And I think that it's a, it's a very high net positive in that regard because very few people come and go, you know, Vassal, you ruined my life. I don't think we ruined your life. I hope not. I mean, I have gotten a few emails from people who said, you know, you said this game was good and it wasn't. A pox upon you but for the most part people tell me that they i that i reviewed a game they and they they played it and they liked it then i know that then we're that, that 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 is a success have you ever thought about doing some analysis stuff on game design no not really maybe i'll let that for someone else have you played tabletop simulator on pc i have not how do you organize your games in each box shelf random no 
I do it by how they fit, and if you notice, it's somewhat color balanced. Like these three games here have yellowish tints to them, and up here we have some whites and descents all together, and down here, I don't know if you guys can see this one, this one's red. Uh, no, I don't think you can see that one. This one here is red. I don't know. It's not, it's not a very good system, but that's what I do. Have I played Werewolf via email on Board Game Geek? I did one time. Does it work? Yeah, it works. But I just don't play board games online very often. Have you played New Dawn yet? Not yet. What's so wrong with diplomacy? Now listen, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with diplomacy. There's a big difference between me hating a... Oh, there you go. There's my third game. A game that I think is good, but not one that I enjoy. Diplomacy. I just don't like it. I don't like it because it's a very long time to be unhappy with other players. You can say, oh, well, we, you know, we won't get mad at each other, and you won't hopefully get lasting, but it's still kind of irritating when all your work goes down the drain because someone stabs you in the back. Or doesn't stab you in the back, but just stabs you in the face. So, yeah, I'm I, just not a big fan of it. Uh, let's see here. Do any modern games use the mechanism of shogi? Not sure. There are lots of great games from 10 years ago that are being reprinted or reimagined. Carcassonne has new artwork. Says uh, Graham, Manila and St. Petersburg are being bought, brought back into print. What other early modern classics would you be coming back? It's kind of weird for me to be calling these early modern classics when they're only 10 years old. I think Amon Ray is good enough to bring back. Tigers and Euphrates looks like that one's coming back, so that's a good thing. Other older games, Through the Desert, should always stay in print, probably. we already seen a reprint of Puerto Rico. Um, I don't know. Amon Ray, though, comes to mind. That's a game a lot of people don't know about, but I think it's an excellent one. Have I been invited on the tabletop? Um, I have not. Would you like to do that? If it fit into my schedule, I would certainly consider it. Um, and I did forget about the HeroQuest scandal in my board game breakfast today. So I did. I did say there would be one big scandal and HeroQuest. So yeah, I got that part right. Yay! Do I speak Polish? I don't. Um, I think maybe my great-great-grandparents did, but I don't. How do you store your Dice Masters? Do you keep them separate according to group or mix them together? I have a special case for Dice Master, um, from, um, Daedalus. And I showed that in one of my board game breakfasts. It's a really nice case. What is my tale of board gaming horror? Oh man, I got tons of those. I should I should write one out and give it to Eric for the show. That's a good idea. Is there a chance that I will visit Korea again? Oh man, give me the opportunity and I'll come. I really love Korea. Will I see Korea again before I die? I certainly hope so. Uh, let's see here. Uh, hey, Hoppy says, I finally come around to watching live board game sessions and really enjoyed watching Time's Up and Spyfall. And you know, that's kind of the the, the thing with these uh, live sessions is that the best games, the ones people enjoy watching the most, are party-style games. And so I really need to get more of those on there. I think they're the games that are the most interesting and entertaining to watch. This week, I'm going to be doing uh, One Night Ultimate Werewolf with my kids, and we'll see if that's entertaining to watch. And if it's not, you know, so be it. But I, I, I think I think that might be fun to watch. Um, do I think Fancy Flight will do a Twilight Imperium 3 game in the Star Wars universe? No, I'm, my, my thinking now is they're going to do a new board game, something completely different, but still with uh, Star Wars. Spyfall for the Dice Towers Essentials line? I tried, guys. I really tried. But it did not happen. I am sad about that, but I did try. Actually, I tried to get Viceroy, too. Uh, what's the best Seasons expansion? I think there's only two, and they're both fine. Uh, could we get Jason to do his Hanukkah games next year? I don't think there's enough Hanukkah games to do even a, a tiny list. Have I read NPCs by Drew Hayes or Wool by Hugh Howie? I have not. I am now back, uh, I am now off my fantasy kick that I was reading for a while. Jumped back into sci-fi. At this point, I am reading through um, The Rise of Troy, I think it's called. Um, 
uh, sci-fi series uh, from the future. Really, really enjoyed it. Really, really like it. Um, what do you say about a more regular live stream gaming event? You will hopefully see more live streaming gaming events. Like I said, I'm able to start doing more streaming. I think that's something that people like to see, so we'll do more of those in the future. All right, with uh, such a massive collection, how often do you need to play all your games? Not nearly as often as I could or, or would like to be able to. What are the pros and cons of having such a large collection of games? The pros would be, hey, you want to play a game? I probably have it. Is there a game that you would like? Most definitely. I can't imagine there's a gamer in existence who would come to my house and find not one game that we could play together. I guarantee you there's some game we could play. The cons, of course, is you don't get them all played. You constantly have to look in the rules to say, did you draw five cards or six cards in this game? So there's that. Um... Have you played Penny Press yet? I have not. Haven't even seen it. Um, yeah. Um, hey, Oppie, I, I, I do want to this. He said it was good to see different games that, that we played during the thing, but it was a distraction of constant eating and snacking without expending equitable calories. That's all well and good, but if you want us to play 24 hours, you're going to have to let us eat snacks. I mean, otherwise, we would have no energy and um, maybe we spent the equitable calories later on. Uh, okay. My game shelves always look so clean and organized. How do you... Or I already answered that. Um, has Battle of Five Armies replaced War of the Ring for you? Yes. Is there anything about War of the Ring that isn't captured in other board games? Well, War of the Ring has, like, some... There's, like, there's uh, several armies in War of the Ring, and some of those don't come in until different events happen over the course of the game. War of the Ring has a lot of different options of where you actually want the battles to take place, uh, splitting people off from the party. Uh, so there's a, it's a much more involved game, but I still, Battle of the Five Armies felt like a more streamlined, and I also like that battle quite a bit. Um, how many dice would you say, is, uh, says Eric, is a good enough variability to play with my wife for Dice Masters? I, I would buy... You know what I would do if I was getting into Dice Masters? I would buy one of each starter pack, and that would be enough to start out and have variety. However, since the Avengers vs. X-Men starter pack isn't, I, I, I don't think it's still easy to find, but I mean, this is going to be a, a non-problem because pretty soon the next set will come out in the next set. There will be starter packs everywhere. But let's say you just want to do one set, and I would buy a, a set, and I'd buy, I don't know, 20 packs. That gives you 40 dice. There's got to be a variety there. Uh, that, that, that seems like plenty. I know a lot of people use poker chips for replacement money, but do you know if anyone makes a deck of cards with printed money on it? No, but for Arts, Arts Cow, it makes um, uh, cards, custom cards, and someone made a power deck, a power grid deck of money there, and I think someone else has a deck of money in card form. If not, it seems like a good idea that someone could do. Did you discuss the games with people before the 18-hour stream? Um, yeah, we sat down and, and discussed the possibilities of the different games that we'd be playing. Um, Hoppy already answered this. Why do you snack so much while gaming? Because we were live streaming straight through. Um, maybe let people take naps instead of eating pretzels nonstop. I, again, I, I, this is just going to have to be difference of opinions. Look, I, if we were all taking naps, then we wouldn't be playing the games. Uh, believe me, I don't sit and just snack nonstop through when I'm playing gaming. We only do that during the live one. Um, did I keep Terra Mystica? I did not. What's your favorite game? Cosmic Encounter. How do you organize your copy of Imperial Assault in order to minimize setup time? I don't. It's in a box, and it takes me a bit to, to set it up. I Big games like that, there is no way to minimize setup time for me. I, I just can't. They're just too big, so I just set them up ahead of time, usually before people come over to play. I don't usually play games like that outside my house. I play them uh, here at my house, and I have them set up ahead of time. Okay. I apologize. I'm, I might be falling behind on things. Oh, there's only 300 people watching, so maybe I'll catch up. Let's see here. Instead of X-Hour Marathons, how about just a single game playthrough? Yes, 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 yes. That is something we are considering. Um, uh, let's see. What do you think of Rado's videos? Uh, they're, they're different than the ones I do. Um, they're certainly not my style. I prefer the camera not to move. 
Um, and I like to kind of gather my thoughts before I put them on video, but that a lot of people like his videos. A lot of people like his things. So he's doing a great job. Uh, different strokes for different folks, of course. Uh, play games, you suggest that will probably never happen, sadly, because a lot of people, what you think might be fun to watch might not be fun to watch, as I'm finding out often. Uh, Zaya did not go over well during a 24-hour event. Well, I think um, part of that is because we were teaching on the fly. It had there's a, there's a decent amount of rules in Zaya, and I and I thought we could quick jump into the rules and quick get into them. And Sam and Z weren't really feeling the game. That just kind of made the whole thing go downhill. Um, uh, I, I like the game a lot. I really, really like it. And it was bugging me that it was coming across so badly. I feel like we did a disservice to that game. I love Zaya. I think it's super fun. Uh, and I, no, I didn't rethink my opinion. My only opinion is I should have played it differently on the video. Um, what's my favorite color? Dark purple. I like questions like that. Um, are you going to ever get around to playing and reviewing Impulse from Carl Shuddick? I haven't got a copy of it yet. So if I do, I will gladly review it. Um, let's see. Have you played Major or four players? No way. And I probably never would. It's a long enough game with two players. So no. Let's see here. I'm trying to catch up here. I apologize. I've fallen behind in questions again. <laughs> there are so many. <laughs> I apologize, guys. Um, okay, here we go. How do you store all your trains maps? I haven't figured out it yet. Right now, the rubber bandit. Can you see it here on the shelf? Oh, barely. Let's see if I can... If you look up there, you'll see trains, and then next to it are my rubber bandit trains maps. Um, what now hot game do you think will be totally forgotten this time next year? That's a tough one. What is a hot game that will be forgotten next year? Well, here, I, I can tell you what to do. We will go to Board Game Geek. And we will look at the hot games. Imperial Salt. No, that will still be hot. Shadows of Brimstone. Probably. I think that won't be like a cult classic. Um, Dead of Winter. No, that will be hot. Battle of Five Armies. No, that one will probably die out. Terra Mystica. Zaya. Doomtown. Reloaded. Elder Char. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough call. I can't think of one that I don't think will be hot next year. I mean, I think most won't be hot. Uh, let's see here. Will you do unboxing much at Christmas? You probably won't see much of me on Christmas. I try to take the whole day off. I go, I let my kids open the presents in, and I try to do stuff with them on Christmas. Do my kids like Mice and Mystics, the ones who have played it? Yes. The right average age to introduce that game? 11. Where did the phrase shut the door come from? I said it once in a video. Someone came in the room, and I said shut the door, and it just stuck. Um... Will I be reviewing Elder Char's Mountains of Madness? I haven't got it yet, so no. I w I'm going to have to get it so I can review it, though. Uh, let's see. What game would you like to be my son's first game? I don't know. Probably some Haba game. Am I looking forward to potentially playing a game with cars or dragons instead of unicorns? Well, I already do play the games of cars and dragons. So what am I missing out on? And what if he wants to play a game with unicorns? It is what it is. Uh, I, I will say that my girls aren't very big fans of G.I. Joe and all that stuff, so I'm kind of hoping my son is because I do like G.I. Joe. But whatever kind of game themes he likes, I'll be very pleased with that. Let's see. Um, have I had any good experience with Kickstarter games? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of great Kickstarter games. I mean, we were just talking about Zaya. Really liked that game. Uh, Alien Frontiers was a great Kickstarter game. And... Um, Euphoria and Viticulture and, um, you know, there's a lot of good Kickstarter games out there. Uh, let's see. Are you even reading these comments, says James? No, James, I'm not. Uh, let's see. Do you think we'll see 
more games like Alchemist that require devices outside the game to play. Oh, yeah, man. That's going to become a trend. It's going to be so annoying after a while, and then it will calm down. Um, is there any advice for dealing with someone in the game group who's easily influenced by other players in games like Twilight Imperium, where everyone's trying to convince them to join their side or team? Whew. That is tough. Um, when you have that player who's easily influenced, then you just got to influence them more than the other players. Uh, I don't know how else to do it. Let's see here. How long is the waiting list for the Dice Tower Con 2015? 100 people? 200 people? I'm not sure what the, the, the number line is. Oh, James wants to know if I'm reading these. Uh, no, I'm not reading them either. Let's see. Tom, what is... Let's see. Let's see here. You're a big fan of XCOM, so I got asked why you never reviewed Galaxy Defenders. Yes, I have played it. I did the uh, preview of it, which is why I kind of delayed my review of it. Um, but I, I will be reviewing it at some point. Although I will say it doesn't really feel like XCOM to me. It feels like a different kind of game. Um, when, let's see. What do you think about the new San Juan? Oh, I'm very excited about that. San Juan, I, I wondered, though. This will be interesting because when I first played Race for the Galaxy, it kind of completely replaced San Juan. I was like, why am I playing uh, San Juan when I could be playing Race for the Galaxy? Um, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Folks, I'm going to take a one-minute break here because uh, my battery life is about to run out, so I need to hook this computer up to the uh, power plug. I'll be right back. In the meantime, look at these games. Okay, I didn't realize my cord was sitting right there. So, <laughs> all right. That was a lot faster than I thought. Okay. Do you think the big X-Wing crafts are worth it or just big dust gatherers? That's a probing question in a sense because I'm like, oh, yeah, they're worth it. But when I'm playing, I bring them out sometimes. So, yeah, they're probably big dust gatherers. But they're still fun and cool. Oh, how did Jason get tired this time? I'll tell you why. Because he had his company's picnic, and he went and he played volleyball for two hours straight, and then soccer for three hours after that. That's mind-boggling to me that he was even awake then, because I would have been dead in, like, the first two hours. Uh, I did not deal Jason the spy card off the bottom of the deck. Not even close. I was really trying to shuffle him up. I would, I would not have played it. Okay, I shouldn't say I would not have played a trick like that, but I did not play a trick like that. What type of games do you think would be good for the live stream? Almost always party games. Almost exclusively party games. Or games with traders or games where there's interaction between the players. Uh, what's the best risk variant type of game? Well, there's a lot of good ones out there. Um, but it depends how far away from risk do you want to get. Do you want to say all the way up to Twilight Imperium? Um, there's the four-player D&D one. Um, I even liked uh, Dust Tactics. Oh, there is a thread on Board Game Geek about Hasbro and Imperial Assault. Hasbro has the rights to Star Wars board games, so they're not able to distribute Imperial Assault themselves. I think, okay, whatever. I'm not worried about this. There's no, still no original source. It's just a bunch of people who are making, uh, basically, um, just guessing things around. I, I don't worry about things like that till I hear the official things. All right. As a game reviewer, how hard is it to see other reviewers criticize your game? Yeah, a little, I suppose, but I, I don't mind it that much. Uh, in fact, it makes me, gives me more empathy for the game designers, but... If someone wants to chew it up and spit it out, they should. They should. I, 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 that's, that's what game reviewing is. And so I, I like to think it, it doesn't bother me that much. How long will the Dice Tower Kickstarter go for? It will go to February 1st, so a little less than a month. Um, do you think Asmodee purchasing Fantasy Flight will change much for the Fantasy Flight games? Fans, and if so, what? No. Any potential downside for this acquisition? There's always potential downsides, but I don't know what they are. I think it's a fine thing. 
Um, I think I'm going to start banning people who ask the same question more than once. Come on, you're, you're hogging up the feed. And I am answering the questions in order. Uh, let's see. Dice Tower is my full-time job. Who do you play with during the week? And how are they giving up so much time to play games? Well, first of all, I'm lucky to have Jace in my group because he'll play anytime, anywhere. But um, Kenny will play games, Jay, uh, Sam and Z. Uh, my daughters play games. Um, there's all sorts of people in my gaming group that I can play games with. I run a board game club at the, at the school in the area, so I get to play a lot of games. Um, why Jason wasn't doing top 10 with you before only one? I don't understand that. Um, he did a, he did a top 10 with us. Let's see here. What's the oldest game in my collection? Hmm. I don't know. I apologize. I don't know. I would have to sit down and figure it all out. Let's see here. Um, how many total... Okay, guys, we're getting a lot of weird stuff here in the comments. I'd like to answer questions, though, if I could. Now, let's not... Uh... Okay, this is... there's just some odd questions coming in now. I... I'm not going to answer rules clarification for games. I'd have to pull it out. You're going to look it up online. I, I... I think it would be better. Um, okay, Elder Char and Last Night on Earth. Which one would you suggest playing for three people who are new to board games beyond target shelves? Oh, probably Last Night on Earth. It's probably easier to Eldritch Horror, but I mean, at the same time, I don't think either one of them's that easy of a game. So, hmm. Seems like some cool app implementations in games like Golden Arcana and Alchemist. Does that trend bother you? Trend does not bother me. No trends like this bother me. Why? I, I never understand why we would get bothered over innovation if that innovation becomes everything. But there's thousands of games out there. So, man... No, it doesn't bother me. Also, now I know you don't watch my board game breakfast because I specifically talk about this. Um, is there a risk of Eldritch Horror becoming too heavy with expansions making it too similar to Arkham Horror? They said that they're going to try to, to help this not happen, but I, I expect that it will. I expect at some point Eldritch Horror will be just as top-heavy. What gaming system do I have? It's called a computer. Um, um, but my daughters have a Wii, a Wii U. Wii is very fun. Very family friendly. Lots of fun. Yeah, I suppose I'm missing out on all these great shooting up games and stuff, but games, I mean, we, we play so much Mario Kart and uh, Super Smash Brothers and that stupid game where one person runs around and everyone else chases them. Um, really fun. Oh, my kids also like the uh, Disney Infinity. The Lancaster Big Box has been announced. Have my opinions changed in the game? I think it's a great game. Big Box, there you go. Um, do you have many games sent to you that you will review? Yes, I think. That's. Do you have many games sent to you that you will review? You mean right now? I'm probably sitting on 70. All right. Will you come to the UK? Find a way for me to get there, and I will come. Machi Koro, Splendor, and Viceroy have similar easy turn, but um, but depth. How would you compare them? Also, do you find this is a pattern of things to come? Guys, you gotta like read your sentences sometimes before you type them. They're all similar. How would I compare them? Uh, they're not similar. Machi Koro is like super simple. Roll dice and see what happens. Splendor is a game in which you are collecting resources and buying things. Viceroy has a feeling like Splendor, but it's much more involved with a bit of an auction. So, I don't understand how it's a pattern of things to come. If you're saying, is it simple games a pattern of things to come? Simple games have existed for the past 30 years. Um, my sister has never lost a co-op game. Can you suggest one that's harder than Ghost Stories, but still really good? I would argue that if you say your sister's never lost a co-op game and then you mention ghost stories, either you're playing a rule wrong or you've been exceptionally lucky because even sometimes if you play well in ghost stories, you are going to lose. As for a game that's harder than ghost stories, but really good, Robinson Crusoe. Uh, why was I in Korea? I was an English teacher slash missionary there for nine years. Have I seen the Machi Koro Harbor expansion? I have not, but I'm still a little annoyed that they didn't stick it in the base game. 
I mean, all they had to do was put in a base game and say, don't use these cards for your first couple games. But Machi Kuro is like a game that needs an expansion. I'm just still kind of mind boggled that they weren't included together. Will you do a tour in America again? I'm in America. You used to live in PA. Do I like PA? Hmm. Pennsylvania. The food in Pennsylvania is fantastic. And Pennsylvania is not a boring state at all. From Lancaster to uh, Gettysburg to Hershey to Harrisburg. Uh, well, if you notice, I'm saying stuff, it's all in the same area. But that's a really cool area. Philadelphia. History. Very interesting. Um, the food there, I grew up on it, so I love the food. Pierogies, uh, steak sandwiches, um, subs that... I'm sorry, we don't call them subs. Hoagies. Okay, the, the, I'm sorry, the rest of the world knows nothing of what a sandwich is like. Pennsylvania is where it's at. Uh, Pennsylvania Dutch food is amazing. Um, so I like it. Uh, I, the people are a bit very blunt and to the point. Uh, when I went down south and, and people were polite to me, it was a bit of jarring at first to get used to that. Um, but yeah, I like Pennsylvania. What is my middle youngest daughter's favorite game at the moment? Well, Holly's favorite game is One Night Ultimate Werewolf. I know that. Uh, the other ones are playing a game called... What is the game? that They're like, they're all about this game. They're all about this game. Um, let's see. Um, what is the game that they've been asking to play? Well, Ruby's all about pretty that pretty princess, that pink one. What's it called? Oh, the unicorn one. The unicorn's in the clouds. Um, the other one said there's this new game called Headbands. Oh, it's probably sitting right here. Yeah. This headbands act up. They're all really big fans of this one right now. Okay. All right. Let's see. How do I store the pieces and cards in my vertical boxes? I put mostly in bags. So it doesn't matter that they're vertical. Uh, let's see. Instead of live streaming plays, would you consider doing recorded, edited playthrough video, uh, re videos like BGG Game Night series, or are they just too much work? They are a ton of work um, because if I'm going to edit at all, that I'm going to edit. That means I need to import the file onto the computer and start messing with it, and these files are huge. When Sam Z and I do a top um, 10 list, we do it's about 50 minutes, sometimes up to an hour. Those files take a ton of editing, a ton to get all that done, I can't imagine how much it would do to something that was twice that long and then go through with multiple camera angles. I, I have a lot of respect for the teams like with Tabletop and they talk about editing. There's a, There must be a huge amount of editing that goes into that. I'm just one guy for now. And um, so I, I that's why I haven't done those yet. Let's see here. I have not read Prey by Michael Crichton. Should I? Alchemist is a well-reviewed game, but they read a couple of reviews saying that the deduction element was too simple. Nearly done in the first round or two. Uh, I would say, and there was one in the second round where I thought I had it done. I had to make some guesses, though. And depending, but there was like, there's so much of an uh, uh, else in the game there. The deduction element is wrong, but there's worker placement and things like that. I wouldn't say it's too easy. I'm glad it's not any harder or else the game would be too complex, I think. I don't mind harder deduction style games, but then that should be the focus of the game. Um, do you have any general anti-downtime advice or play tweaks? Well, one is sitting there going, hey, let's go, let's go. Come on, guys, let's go, let's go, let's go. But that's about it. Um... Did you consider any hobby games for the marathon? Like the pig truffle game. Yeah, actually, I asked Z to bring the pig truffle game, but he, he no longer has it. Um, most of the games are for kids, so, I mean, we could do that for a laugh, I guess, but I don't know. We'll figure it out. Are my shelves off-the-shelf products? Yes, these are um, the shelves from uh, Ikea. They don't make this particular brand anymore. These are the Expedite shelves, but now they, they're Calix, K-A-L-L-A-X. Shelves are very similar, except... All the shelves are this thinness instead of these real thick ones that are here. Um, where did the term Ameritrash get coined and what exactly does it mean? Sounds like a negative term for American games, but maybe I'm missing something. Well, there was a bunch of guys on Board Game Geek who were unhappy with um, some of the snootish attitude that people had towards um, 
American style games and uh, it definitely was there. If you go back and you would read about Fantasy Flight games when they first made Twilight Imperium 2 and just the people, there was a lot of this real like, so that's the games you play? Well, mm-hmm. Really, there was. So these guys took offense, but they took it too far. Caused a lot of problems. One of them got banned from Board Game Geek, so they started their own uh, website, uh, Fortress Ameritrash, which, oddly enough, is about Euros more now more days than it is about Ameritrash. But anyhow, so the term was there, and it it doesn't make sense to a lot of people because the games aren't trash, but they did it just as a as a like a rallying cry. So the term stuck. I just said we'd call them Marathrash. It was actually Z coined a term, but I thought it was funny. It's um, it's not that big of a deal. How old am I? I am 38. Yes. <laughs> I did double check there. I'm 38. Do you know of any plans for expansions? I think there might be expansion for paperback, but I don't know that there needs to be. The game is pretty solid on its own. I wish it was more available for others to find. Yes, it's a great game. I was actually considering it for the Dice Tower Essentials line, but it, there, just, there was too many that were already printed that are out there. When do you decide to let go of a game? When I got a new one to fill its spot, and a new one is better. I am really trying to get the Robinson Crusoe trait two cards done, for those asking. I've just not been able to pull it off yet. I cannot force it to be done. I can, I can try, but that's about the extent of it. My favorite genre? If it's movie, it's a tie between... No, my favorite... Actually... What am I saying? My favorite genre and everything is superhero. Superhero. Fantasy and sci-fi come second to that. I like superhero. In movies, after superhero, probably fantasy and sci-fi, but I also really like pirate, too. Not enough good pirate movies these days, though. There used to be so many great ones. Um... What are the best games to play with people when there is a language barrier? That's a good top 10 list, and we will consider that in the future. When not on video, do you have any lighting suggestions? I, I don't actually get that. Can we, um, where can we ask questions Tom will answer? You're asking them in the right spot. <laughs> um... Let's see here. Okay. Guys, I only have a few minutes left for today. I'm going to do this. Oh, have I ever played Hearthstone? Yes. In fact, I haven't played Hearthstone for a while, so I jumped on onto it a couple days ago, and I downloaded some of the new packs of cards. I looked at the new packs, and I thought, that's interesting, although it felt like a lot of the new cards all work together, so I'd have to get a lot more of the new ones for them to work well. And then Jeff Engelstein challenged me to a battle, and I was like, oh, oh no, I'm going to lose. So we started off, and he started beating the snot on me, but then I came back, and oh, and I thought I was going to win, and then he played an ultra rare card, which basically won the game for him, this one single card, which was really cheesy, and um, just irritated me in general. I don't know. Ultra rare cards are extremely powerful, even though I have two in my own deck, but that's not the point. Um, let's see here. Wow. Okay, where do I get such nice poker chips? Well, the ones that I, 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 have, I have some that are made for me. And the ones that I used here that are in my drawer, well, okay, I, I have two different kinds here in my drawer. I have the, the Victory Point chips, which are which were made for me. Um, these here, these money chips that I have, I got these, I, I don't remember where I got them. They were from PokerChip.com, I think. I went and I did a lot of research, and I wanted chips that had the money amount around on the sides that didn't have any kind of casino markings on them. I wanted to be able to use these for anything, not just casino style games that felt good that were hard to break although i have broken one of them by accident but that i mean these things go through a lot of use and i think these are ceramic chips if i remember correctly all i know is that i'm incredibly happy with them and would like to and, and i hope to keep them for a long time folks obviously i didn't get to a lot of these uh questions there are apparently many many questions i didn't get to but don't forget uh, when I post one of these live Q&As, you can start asking questions ahead of time or early, and we will answer as I, I try to answer them starting from the top and going to the bottom. So obviously, I didn't get to a lot of your questions, and 
Uh, no one asked me much about the Kickstarter, but anyhow, the Kickstarter is starting in a couple weeks. Um, this week, tomorrow, you're going to see the top 10 games of 2014 from uh, um, the, the Board Game Corner guys. And you're also going to see Dan King's looking at 2014 as an overview. On Wednesday, you'll see Dan King's top 10, and then you'll see me, Sam, and Z doing a look at 2014 as an overview. On Christmas Day, you will see Sam, me, and Z, our top 10 of 2014. And then on Friday, you'll see Jason Levine's top 10 of 2014. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I hope you all have a very, very Merry Christmas. Um, I'll be doing some more live shows this week. I'm not sure when. Um, tomorrow I'll probably do the live um, uh, One Night Ultimate Werewolf with my kids. And I think th I said Wednesday I'm going to be doing the live top 10 with Melody, uh, or her top 100 of all time. And then on th Friday, Melody and I will probably play a live HeroScape game for you guys to watch. That, that should be fun. Either way, guys, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you asking the questions. I apologize that I didn't get to everyone's questions. Um, but until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching. feel like I should be doing Eric's voice at this point.